Hi friends, welcome back to my channel and a very special welcome if you're new here. My name is Jen, I'm a certified weight loss and nutrition coach and I'm on WW Personal Points. Happy Friday, it is Friday, it is way in day. We're gonna talk about my week, set some goals for next week, go over this week's WW workshop topic and of course, we'll talk about this week's weigh in. I have lots to share with you, so if you're excited, give this video a big, huge thumbs up. Make sure you're subscribed and your bell notification is turned on because I upload five days a week and Friday is always weigh-in day. Check out that description box down below for nutrition coaching. I offer personalized to you macros and calories. Highly recommend, highly, highly recommend. And one-on-one -on -one coaching if you would like to chat with me directly. Links, discounts to all my favorite things and my Facebook group. Head on over, join us there. We'd love to have you are all down in that description box. So let's jump into my week, the workshop topic, and of course my weigh-in. Happy Friday, friends. I hope you had an amazing, amazing week. I had a week. I had a week. If you are in my Facebook group or if you saw my post on my community tab here on YouTube, I unfortunately, once returning from my trip to Florida, tested positive for COVID. Within a day or so of getting home from my trip, I wasn't feeling very well. I had lots and lots of body aches, the chills, zero appetite headache, all the typical flu slash COVID symptoms. I went ahead and ordered some COVID tests, took a test, and unfortunately was positive. And even more unfortunately than that, my poor husband also tested positive as well. I'm pretty sure that I shared that with him. How nice of me to do that. So we both actually tested positive. We had very different symptoms. I definitely had more flu-like symptoms. Like I mentioned, the body aches, the chills, fever, runny nose. I had a really bad runny nose for over a week where he, on the other hand, had the shortness of breath, the tightness in the chest, the fatigue. He actually ended up going to the emergency room just to make sure that there wasn't an issue with his lungs. And thankfully there wasn't. There was no medication administered to either one of us. We just let it take its course and we are both feeling substantially, substantially better. We both have now tested negative for COVID. So we are over the big hump. I still am suffering from quite a bit of fatigue. I'm still pretty tired and my nose is still runny and stuffy. I also lost my taste and smell about five days in after testing positive and I still am missing a lot of my taste and smell. I feel like it's slowly coming back but I definitely can't taste or smell things that don't have a very distinct strong taste or smell. So I'm crossing my fingers that that eventually makes its way back into my life because that is not fun at all. So because of testing positive for COVID and having literally zero energy, I didn't do any exercise this last week. It made way more sense for me to just rest my body and recover. And I'm grateful that I did that because I think that that helped me recover maybe a little bit more quickly and started feeling a little more bit more back to normal a little bit faster. So this week lacked exercise, but also this week lacked a lot of food. I did not have an appetite at all. It started coming back about a week and a half in, and I still don't have my full appetite back or my taste or smell, which food is not exciting when you can't taste or smell it. So although I didn't get in a lot of movement, I also didn't take in a lot of calories and nutrition. I really heavily focused on water and made sure that whatever I ate when I did eat was protein based so that it kept me full and really just helped my body recover as fast as possible from being sick. I, like I said, I'm on the mend. I'm feeling better. I am going to take this week off as well from physical activity just to give my body a chance to fully, fully recover. By the time next week rolls around, I'll be two and a half, three weeks into this whole adventure and I should be feeling back to normal hopefully and can get back into walking and start that gym strength training routine that I'm really, really excited about. But before I jump into my 
post-COVID weigh-in, let's chat about this week's workshop topic, which is about movement, which is very important and actually ties in really nicely with a video I just put out on my nutrition channel about the fact that you don't have to exercise to lose weight. I'll link that video down below. If you're not subscribed to my nutrition channel, highly recommend. That's where I share a lot of tips and tricks when it comes to weight loss and nutrition. And I did just talk about exercise and weight loss. And today's topic from WW is how to sneak movement into your day-to-day -day life. You don't have to exercise to lose weight. You don't have to go to the gym. There are little things that you can sneak in day-to-day -day that play even a bigger part in weight loss and overall health and body recomposition than intentional exercise. Do you feel like you don't have time for a full workout? I know that I do. I am so busy that so many days go by and I'm like, I do not have time to go exercise. Don't worry about it. If you're busy, if life happens, if it's just not your jam to go to the gym, that is completely okay. There are so many things that we can do daily in our everyday life that can help us lose weight, tone up our body, and see big results in our weight loss journey. No movement is too small. So when we're thinking about moving our body, here's some things to think about. Number one, is to pick a day of the week and think about what falls on your to-do list. Maybe it's a weekday, maybe it's a weekend. Think about what are you obligated to do that day. Step number two is to consider how you might sneak in some extra movement while doing those tasks on your to-do list. Pick your two favorite sneak attack movements that you can make and add those to the list. So let's say that your to-do list for the day involves staying at home. There's a lot that you have to get done around the house. How can you implement extra movement when you're at home. One idea is you can stretch while waiting for your coffee to brew. You can turn on some music and dance during prepping for dinner. You can walk around the block or your house for that matter after getting the mail. I'm always dancing around my house. I'm always just like moving around towards my husband when I'm getting my stuff out to meal prep. I'm always just moving my body. It's fun. It's a great way to get in some extra movement. Now maybe your to-do list for that day has you on the go. You are out of the house all day and you are on the go. Choose a parking spot as far away from the entrance as possible to get in some extra steps. Return your shopping cart to the front of the store instead of the cart return and take the stairs instead of taking the elevator. This is a huge, huge one. This is just a really simple way to get an extra movement. Take the stairs and skip the elevator. And lastly, maybe your to-do list keeps you in the office, whether that's a home office or at your place of employment. Set a timer to get up and move every hour or utilize that little reminder on your fitness tracker. Stand up each time you respond to a text or email and switch to a standing desk or place your laptop on a stack of books so that you're forced to stand up. One thing that I do is I make sure that I'm getting up per my Apple Watch every hour and walking around, getting in about 200 to 250 steps every hour. And since I work from home, I can spend a lot of time at my desk and in my office all day long that it's important for me to intentionally move my body throughout the day so I'm not just sitting all day. So let's dive a little deeper with a fun fact versus fiction. Fact, all movement adds up, whether it's 30 seconds or three minutes, and a myth. I need to be active for a certain amount of time a day for that activity to count. Despite our best efforts, you guys, activity isn't always something we can fit into our day every day. Maybe it's not something we enjoy. And the reality is if we force ourselves to go to the gym, take a walk, do any type of exercise that we really don't like, we're not going to stick with it. We're not going to reap any rewards from that activity if we're not consistently doing it. And remember, fitness starts in the gym and weight loss starts in the kitchen. You do not have to exercise to lose weight. Now, exercise is important for a healthy body and heart health and to tone up and lean down your body, but it isn't essential for weight loss. And don't beat yourself up over the fact that you're not able to introduce exercise into your day-to-day -day life or even three, four, five, six times a week. Just make sure that you're getting up a little more throughout the day. Take the long way to the store, to the cart return, dance around your kitchen, and have some fun with it and just move your body a little bit more every day. That's going to make the biggest difference in your weight loss. So I really like this topic and it is that reminder that exercise isn't that important when it comes to losing weight. Speaking of losing weight, it's time to jump into this week's weigh-in. No exercise for me this week, light on the calories this week, all of that resulted in a really, really good weigh-in this week. I am down 2.2 
pounds. That's amazing. A little over two pounds lost this week. I will say, I will say that it has to do with the foods that I was choosing, I'm sure, but a lot of it has to do with the fact that I was under the weather and just not eating a lot, which contributed to a little bit more than an average amount of weight loss every week. Now, I'm not complaining. I'm going to take it. I'll take the 2.2 loss. I will go ahead and put right here on the screen my overall loss so far, and I'm inching closer and closer to hitting my goal weight. Speaking of goal weight, a lot of you have been reaching out in my DMs, comments on YouTube, in my Facebook group, asking me how much more weight that I have, want to lose, telling me that I look great and I don't need to lose any more weight. Thank you so much, but yes, I do. There is still some weight that I would love to take off my body. Like I mentioned before, I don't have a set goal weight, but I would like to lose about 30 to 40 more pounds. We'll just kind of see how my body does as I continuously lose weight. I am feeling really good in the skin that I'm in. I feel good at the weight that I'm at. My goal is to get under 200 pounds and I'm, I'm, I'm close. I'm real close. So that is one goal weight that I have is to just get into Wonderland, get into the 100s. That's going to be a huge, huge milestone for me. Almost as big as losing 100 pounds because listen, I haven't seen the hundreds in years. So I don't have a goal weight. I have some goal weight ideas, but we'll just see where this whole weight loss journey takes me. Now I want to hear from you guys. Let me know how your week was. Did you gain? Did you lose? What do you think about this not having to exercise to lose weight? And is it music to your ears? If you enjoyed another way in, give this video a big, huge thumbs up. Make sure you're subscribed and your bell is turned on so you don't miss a weigh in or any other of the five videos that I upload every single week. Check out that description box again for new nutrition coaching, links, discounts to my favorite things, and don't forget to come join us on Facebook. We'd love to have you. Happy Friday, friends. Happy weekend, and I'll see you in tomorrow's grocery haul. Bye.